What's up? It's Richie. Angela. Angela here with your final. It's a little bit later, but it's your final uh, uh, video for the college football 2018 season. We're just gonna go over the tallies real quick that we did in the season. We're gonna, you know, kind of review the bowl game real quick. She doesn't know what all the scores were, <laughs> and then a shout out to a couple of players again. We're trying to keep this a little bit quick and, and sweet. So throughout the entire season, I got 607 right out of 848 games, which roughly translates to about 72%. It's 71.5%, so about. And Angela actually got 465 right out of 848, which is 54.8%, which is roughly 55%. So it just goes to show you she didn't know anything about what was going on. She went by colors and by mascot. <laughs> She had no idea, and she's got over half of them right. So it kind of just shows you the fickle nature of football. Anything can happen. It doesn't matter. Like, you can know a whole lot, and then it, it doesn't matter. Yep. So good job, Angela. Getting, good job, you know, Richie. Getting over, getting, hey, you won, basically. You got a winning percentage there. <laughs> you got over half, right? Oh. So, <laughs> the winning percentage. So yeah. we're going to go through the bowl games and a whole bunch of them. I'll just say the scores. She's got a few little like tidbits for not every single game, but most of a lot of the games. So we'll just start out. The first game was the Cure Bowl, Tulane Green Wave. They beat the Louisiana Lafayette Raging Cajuns by a score of forty-one to twenty-four. And in the Cure Bowl, there was uh, oh, there was a a school record for running back Darius Bradwell. Yep. He, he ran, ran 35 times for 150 yards. There you go. Um, and and they broke the Cure Bowl record with having 28 first downs. First downs. Yeah, so two lanes set a record there with first downs, 28. Uh, Just FYI, I'm reading off. Yes, yeah, she. I wrote it down. So and there's a lot of acronyms, so I, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get it. All right. So New Mexico Bowl. That uh, Utah State creamed them, 52 to 13. I remember Utah State had one of the best offenses in the country all season, and they showed it in that bowl game. Uh, they won 52-13. to 13. There wasn't really much going on with that. It was just a blowout. Uh, the Las Vegas Bowl. Fresno State beat Arizona State 31-20. to 20. And Fresno State, actually both teams had a few uh, gems in that game. So Fresno State. So Fresno State. What team record. Oh, team record is 12 wins. And they're the only team in NCAA history with double dip digit losses back to back two back to back double digit win seasons yeah so in 2016 they went uh, i think it was 1 and 11 and the last two years in 2017 and 2018 they won at least 10 games in each so they were the first team to go double digit wins and then have back to back double digit or go double digit losses and go back to back double digit wins straight after so they basically it was awesome for, for, them. for them yeah, yeah. great for them and Arizona State. So Arizona State, they had their running back. Running back Eno Benjamin had completed, had a single broken the school record, had one thousand six hundred forty two rushing yards, and broke the single season school record. Right. Um, then then we'll go to the Camellia Bowl. Georgia Southern Eagles beat the Eastern Michigan Eagles. Um, this is actually pretty close. Game. I remember watching it. Georgia Southern ended up winning twenty three to twenty one. And then Georgia said, "Wait." Yep, Georgia Southern. Yeah. They set an FBS record, and they only had five turnovers all season. Yeah, which is pretty significant. That's how you went. They were one of the top teams in the nation in turnover margin. Um, so they they actually forced a lot, and they didn't commit hardly any, which is why also why they won. I think they ended up winning uh, 11 games on the year because of that. Um, if you can score and then not turn it over, keep the ball from the other team, it's good. Uh, all right. Then the New Orleans Bowl, uh, Appalachian State, they creamed Middle Tennessee State. Appalachian State Mountaineers beat the Middle Tennessee State Blue Raiders 45-13. to uh, The Boca Raton Bowl, now this is, I, I was touting this one up all season. UAB, a few years ago, they had no school, they had no uh, football program for two years. In 2017, they won eight games. This year, they won their conference, which was their first conference you know, a championship in school history. They won uh, 10 games, which was most in school history. And then they won their bowl game 37-13 to 13 over the Northern Illinois Huskies, which... Was their first bowl win ever. Yeah, first ever awesome. bowl win. So Boca Raton. It's an amazing job by them. I still say their coach, Bill Clark, should be somewhere else. I, 
I don't think he got hired any out, outside anywhere else yet, but... Why should it be somewhere else if he brought them to win? Because it's a smaller school. I'm saying a bigger school is going to want him. Oh. Because if he can do that with a small school with hardly any resources, imagine what... That's the thinking. Imagine what he can do with a higher-end school. Cool. All right. So then we go to the Frisco Bowl. This is this is actually one of my surprises. Ohio Bobcats beat the San Diego State 27 nothing. I think I had picked San Diego State in this one. Um, the one that thing that kind of bothers me, Juwan uh, Washington, the running back for San Diego State, he missed like four games in a year. He came into this this last game needing, I think it was 128 rushing yards to get to 1,000. He got 127. He missed it by a yard. He got to 999. So, I think they should anyway. give it to him. You pick I'm players. sure they could. Uh, if they went throughout the season, they could probably Wait. find it in the yard somewhere. Who won? Ohio beat San Diego State in that one. Okay, you picked yeah. All right, so then the Gasparilla Bowl here in uh, Tampa. Uh, the Marshall beat the hometown USF team, and they creamed them 38-20. to 20. It was like 21 nothing after the first quarter. Basically. We're in Tampa. <laughs> yeah, so. That's why I went. All right, the Bahamas Bowl, so go to a good note. Uh, Florida, uh, I think I skipped one. I mean, not. All right, so the the Florida International Golden Panthers beat the Toledo Rockets thirty five to thirty two. So, yeah, no, it's the next one. Oh, so the FIU. So running back Anthony Jones had a school record with three touchdowns, and yeah. he has wait overall the school record was nine wins. Yeah. He and in, in September of that, I guess of this year. Yeah. He September right before shot. right around the when the season started, he this guy he was actually shot. Um, out somewhere, he missed like half the season, most of the season. He comes back. I think he might have missed mo all the season, almost the entire season, and he comes back in the bowl game and sets a school, school record, record with three rushing touchdowns. So that's pretty amazing <laughs> for him. Yeah. Um, and then Toledo, to be fair, was in, it was a shootout. I mean, thirty-five, thirty-two, and Toledo. Had the second highest season total school history with 525 points. So in Toledo, since basically the year 2000, they've been one of the higher scoring teams in the country. They, they know, they're known for their offenses. And I was surprised when I read that because it didn't seem like they were putting up points by the bunches. Like, yeah, they were putting them up and I knew they were a top offense. Um, but I was a little surprised that that, this is actually... Because like I said, over the last basically almost 20 years, they they put up points a lot. Like every season, they normally have a really good offense. So that was pretty pretty interesting for me. Uh, the next one, the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. The uh, BYU Cougars slaughtered the Western Michigan Broncos 49-18. to And this was pretty cool because... BYU, the quarterback, Zach Wilson, tied the NCAA Bowl record with 18-18 of completion. Yeah, running, so he complete, completed passing, completed passing. passing 18 out of 18, and which is second highest in bowl history. The highest is 19. So, no, the or, 18 of 18, 100% is most highest bowl history. Okay. He completed 18 straight uh, passes, which is second highest in bowl history. The, the bowl record is 19, 19 straight. straight pace. Okay. Yeah. And then four touchdown passes tie the school bowl record. Yeah, so his four touchdown passes, BYU in the 80s was. They passed it all around a lot, and he tied the bowl score record. So 18 out of 18 is, awesome. I mean, it's it's perfect. You know, yeah. he, he could not have done it better if he wanted to. Uh, literally could not have. So, um, all right, then the next one, we'll go to the Birmingham Bowl. This was a fun game back and forth, Memphis Tigers and Wake Forest. Wake Forest ended up winning 37-34, but Memphis has one of the most electrifying players in NCAA history, and she's going to tell you why. So the kickoff receiver, Tony... Kickoff returner. Kickoff returner. See? This is... I'm getting it. Kickoff returner, Tony Pollard. Yeah. Tied with the NCAA record with seven kickoff return touchdowns. Touchdown. Yeah. Yes. In his career, he has seven, which ties the NCAA record, which he's going to play on Sundays, if nothing else, as a kick returner. And maybe, who knows, it could translate over to be a really good kick returner as well. Um, all right. The Hawaii Bowl... Um, somewhere. Oh yeah, because I skipped some stuff. So, let's go to that one. Because that one's next. The Hawaii Bowl. 
This was surprising. It was in Hawaii. It was against Hawaii. Louisiana Tech had to go all the way from Louisiana. And Louisiana Tech pounded them 31 to 14. Part of it though, Hawaii has one of the, had one of the best passing offenses in the country. But Louisiana Tech played really, really good defense, and she's gonna tell you why. Cause they beat the team bowl record and they had nine sacks. Yeah. So this What's passing that? team, if if you're on the ground nine times, that means you're not passing. That means you're not getting yards and points. So, Louisiana Tech's defense was great there. Uh, we'll go to the Armed Forces Bowl. Uh, the Army West Point Black Knights beat the Houston Cougars 70-14. to And she'll tell you a little bit about that. So, Army is the quarterback, Kevin Hopkins Jr. He received five rushing touchdowns. He set a bowl record. Bowl record with Arm. five rushing touchdowns. Yeah, so the Armed Forces bowl record, he had five rushing touchdowns. He had 56 point margin of victory, margin which of ties victory. a bowl record. Uh, I think that's all time bowl record for any any game. The 70 14. And then 11 wins most in program history. Yeah, the Armed Forces. Arm, Army won 11 games, which is significant because I was telling her right before, they won multiple national titles in the 40s. So. Now, they didn't play as many games. They played like 10 games usually then, but even still 11. That's pretty significant there. Um, then there's the Dollar General Bowl. Um, up here, Troy beat Buffalo. Buffalo had like an... You know, they came out of nowhere to win 10 games. One of the best uh, offenses in the country, but Troy, they've shown why they're one of the best teams in the Sun Belt. Third straight year, I think, winning 10 or more games. So Troy won 42 to 32. In that one. Then there's the the first responder bowl is Boston College Boys State. That one was actually canceled, so there was no final with that. Uh, the quick lane bowl, this one caught me by surprise. Minnesota destroyed Georgia Tech 34 to 10. Um, and part of it is they have a really good receiver in Tyler Johnson. Who had 1,169 receiving yards. Receiving yards and 12 touchdowns. Yeah, which is a single season school record single season for season. Minnesota. They don't. They don't normally have many passing. So I was trying. I remember SR. It was school record. I'm like, what does SSR mean? Yeah. <laughs> Single. Um. All right. So then there's the Cactus Bowl, which oh yeah. It says it. It says the cheese bowl. I might have gotten this wrong, but uh. Yeah. Anyway, so TCU. So is the cheese bowl. TCU beat Cal by a score of whopping 10-7. to 7. And if I'm not mistaken, that went to overtime. 7-7. <laughs> seven, <laughs> seven, seven. She's going to say why. So it's not the cheese bowl? It's no, I think I wrote it down. Okay. I think it might have... I think it used to be the Cactus Bowl. And the... Uh, um... Yeah, so it looks like it's cheese bowl. Well, so that's I, what I wrote it down as. Yeah, so I think I wrote, wrote this one down. I think it used to be the Cactus Bowl. But now this is the Cheez-It Bowl. It's between Cal and TCU. TCU won 10-7. And it was like one of the worst games ever. <laughs> they had nine. So overall on the team, it yeah. looks like they had nine interceptions, which is the most in the, the bowl 30-year history. Yeah, because the Cheez-It Bowl used to be the Copper, Copper Bowl. bowl. And from the 89 to 95, then it's gone by different names since, hence why I, I mistakenly call it the Cactus Bowl. Um, there were nine interceptions in this game. Five by, four by TCU, three, or four by, uh, uh, four thrown by TCU, five by Cal. It actually started off, weirdly enough, both games started off with, I think, freshmen starting, and then both got hurt. And basically, both ended up with like the fifth-year seniors that were both walk-ons and had never played, <laughs> and it showed. <laughs> and the for Cal. Now this is this is positive. Now there because there was terrible offense, defenses were being played. So Cal. Cal defensive back Jalen Hawkins. Yeah. He received three interceptions. Yeah. So they set a cheesy bowl record with three interceptions. And so with a low scoring game like this, I would have thought it would have been a defensive game, but because they kept throwing interceptions is why it was low. Yeah, and it was because of the quarterback. I, I watched the game, both quarterbacks, like I said, it 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 ended up like TCU, um, I think they actually started their fifth year their senior in the game because their quarterbacks had gotten hurt all season. 
And then Cal started like a freshman and ended up going to their fifth year senior. So it ended up being like these two walk-ons, fifth year people that never hardly ever played. Um, and they were both pretty terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, I'll give the defense the credit that they caught all those interceptions, but the fact that there were nine, it was just terrible, terrible quarterback play mm -hmm. by them. Um, so then we go to the Independence Bowl. Duke Blue Devils slaughtered the Temple Owls, 56 to 27. So the Duke had 56 points. And oh, quarterback Daniel Jones passed for 423 yards and did five touchdown passes. Yeah, which all of that. Independence Bowl records. Yep, so set. the 56 points were in the Independence Bowl record and the passing and touchdown passes. The yards were in Independence Bowl records. Daniel Jones is significant because he probably will be a first-round pick in this draft, so go him. Uh, then we'll go to the Pinstripe Bowl. This is a sad day for you fans. Uh, Wisconsin killed the Miami Hurricanes 35-3. to There just wasn't. Uh, there, the, the running back for Wisconsin, which excuse me, uh, Taylor, Jonathan Taylor, went off on that for like 200-something rushing yards. It showed why he won the Dope Walker Award, which is given to the best running back in the nation. Um, it's sad for Miami. I was it's yeah. a Florida team, so I was going for Miami. Uh, then we go to the Texas Bowl. Baylor beat the Vanderbilt Commerce 45-38. This was one of my favorite games of the year. It was back and forth, high scoring, 45-38 clearly. But it, it, it's what it was. It was tied throughout the game, kept going back and forth. It was, in fact, it, one of my favorite parts ever, the first, the first play of this game, the Vanderbilt quarterback, um, which his name escapes me right now, but uh, the, the Vanderbilt quarterback and the starting linebacker for Baylor, they were friends, right? They, I guess they had grown up together and they were friends. The first play of the game, the linebacker waves to the quarterback and the quarterback just gave him a wink. Like, the linebacker was saying hi <laughs> in the middle of, the, of, of it. Kyle Shermer. So, yeah, he's a... Uh, Pat Shermer was a head coach in the NFL. It's his son. And Do you know who he was the head coach for? Uh, I don't remember. Um, but, but yeah, it was just, I thought it was great. It was like literally, like in the middle of this college football game, This it's on national TV, the first play, the linebacker for Baylor waves high <laughs> to the quarterback. And the quarterback just like gave him a wink and they went off from there. Awesome moment, awesome moment. Um, so, but there was some, a record set in the tech that, so the, by Vanderbilt? Yeah, so by, by Vanderbilt, the Texas Bowl record was set by running back, mm -hmm. Keyshawn Vaughn, and he had 243 yards rushing. Yeah, so he just went off on them, he ran for a thousand yards in a year, it was great. Alright, Auburn killed Purdue in the Music City Bowl, 63-14, to 14, and they set a bowl record. For, so Auburn set. So Auburn set the bowl record in the first half. They were up fifty six. Yeah, they had, they had fifty six points in the first half. But and all together sixty three, which is most by the SEC team. Yeah, so it's both my most by an SEC team in bowl history. Uh, and, and then oh, the wide receiver yeah. Darius. Yeah, Slayton. Darius Slayton. He received three touchdowns, was set a bowl record. Yeah. All right, then we will go to the Alamo Bowl. Um, which was between Washington State and Iowa State, and this ended up being a lot closer. Washington State won twenty eight to twenty six. So this, so he yeah, so that is as Wazoo, and I was looking at it like, what is yeah. Wazoo? Because you didn't know, like Washington State's, it's kind of known as Wazoo, kind of like Missouri is known as Mizzou. So that's so for it. you Wazoo fans, yeah. um, this you had set a school record, had eleven wins. Your quarterback Gardner, Gardner Minshew. Set the Pac-12 record with 4,779 passing yards. Yeah, he did. And then, the um, yeah. And so there was one game I had skipped, the Camping World Bowl. Uh, Syracuse ended up beating West Virginia 34-18. Um, that was kind of a disappointing game. Only It actually was a good game. It was a close game most of the game. It was kind of back and forth. And then Syracuse scored a couple touchdowns late in the fourth quarter to kind of go up. But it was back and forth. It was like a one, two, three point game all game. Uh, Will Greer, the quarterback for Virginia, skipped it. It could have been a much better game, but whatever. Um, so then we're going to the. 
one of these games. I think it's. I think we're we're kind of all around here. So, um, so we got the Arizona Bowl between Nevada and Arkansas State. I had let's get, we'll go back. Um, I had I thought this was going to be a high scoring game. Arkansas and Nevada had two of the better offenses in the country, and to be fair, Arkansas State. Had 499 yards with three interceptions. Yeah, yeah, so they actually put up five, about 500 yards in offense, but they kept, like, I think three times they got into inside the red zone. I think a couple times inside the 10-yard line, and they threw interceptions, which kept Nevada in it all game, and then Nevada ended up winning in overtime 16-13. Uh, to 13. Um, Then we'll go with the, let's see here. There's some there's some stuff missing here. So, uh, all right, we go to the Peach Bowl. Uh, the Florida Gators, they their offense ended up being great. They slaughtered the Michigan Wolverines, forty-one to fifteen. There's not a lot to say. Just Florida was really really good, especially in the second half. It was it was close in the first half, and then the Gators took off from there. Um, the Belt Bowl, South Carolina and Virginia, and Virginia. I was surprised about this. Virginia, not so much that Virginia won, but they killed them. They beat them 20 to nothing. They shut them out in a little game. That's not good. Uh, Cotton Bowl, Clemson. They slaughtered Notre Dame, which at the time was like, yeah, Notre Dame sucks, but we'll get to what something later. Uh, in the Orange Bowl, Alabama ended up beating Oklahoma 45-34. So then at that point, it was going to be uh, Oklahoma facing Clemson for the national championship game. Uh, the Military Bowl, this is actually a really good game. Cincinnati, Bearcats, and Virginia Tech Hokies, they went back and forth. Um, there was a rain delay. The, the Cincinnati quarterback, he got hurt early in the game. Hayden, uh, I can't remember his name, but he came in. He's a senior quarterback. He, you know, by his time, he had started the year before. He came in, finished it off as Cincinnati won 35-31. Uh, Sun Bowl, Stanford beat Pittsburgh in a low-scoring slugfest of the game, which is pretty much what I thought. Both pretty good running games, both good defenses. Stanford won 14-13. Michigan State and Oregon, kind of one of the most boring games. Which, cause, and it's actually kind of what I figured. Michigan State has one of the best defenses in the country. Oregon has usually one of the better offenses in the country. Michigan State's defense is... Terrible, with a capital terrible. <laughs> um, and Oregon, their defense is usually pretty good. Both defenses played well. Oregon ended up scoring the only touchdown in the game and won by a whopping score of seven to six. Um, so, so that one, the Liberty Bowl. This one was a great game. Oklahoma State ended up being the Mizzou Tigers. Missouri Tigers, 38-33. It was back and forth, really high scoring, lots of awesomeness. And she's gonna say. A little bit about it. So for your Oklahoma State. Yep. Wait. Cowboys. Cowboys. <laughs> I already thought. So for your Cowboys, had a quarterback Taylor Cornelius who received four touchdowns. He received. set a Liberty Bowl record. So the Liberty Bowl record. Keeps mistaking re REC for record and receive. I, I don't. But <laughs> but yeah, he had four touchdown passes. passes. Yeah. Taylor Cornelius, he was a fifth year senior, awesome year. Over 4,000 yards passing, like 30-something touchdown passes. Great year for him. And, and Missouri, they so, set... Oh, yeah, they set a Liberty Bowl record for yeah. 637 yards. Yeah, so it was a high-scoring game and lots of big plays all around there. All right, then we'll go to the Gator Bowl. Texas A&M killed NC State 52-13, to which running back Travion Williams went off and set a Gator Bowl record with 236 rushing yards. Um, the Outback Bowl between Iowa and, I guess, I skipped one. Uh, yeah, so, so the Outback Bowl between Iowa and Mississippi State, Iowa won 27-22, that one was back and forth, uh, but Iowa ended up scoring later to go up. Uh, the Holiday Bowl between Northwestern and Utah. Utah, they came in with an 11-1 record under the head coach. I'm all like, they went it up 20-3 at halftime. And then what happened? Northwestern won 31-20. Yeah. And quarterback Clayton Thorson was number one. Passed for number one for Northwestern with 10,731. 
passes. Yeah. So in his career, he passed for that 10,731 yards, which he finished him as the number one quarterback in school history in passing yards. And had 53rd straight start. Big Ten. I kept saying Big Ten record. So he, he started started 53 straight games, which set a Big Ten record, and he ended up as the Northwestern most winningest quarterback in uh, Northwestern history. He went 36 and 17 as a starter. Uh, and we finish these off. Kentucky ended up beating um, Penn State and the Sisters Bowls 27 24. Kentucky was up by, they were up like 21 3, and then um, Penn State came back, and, and it was a great game. LSU beat. They ended the UCF streak. They beat a 40-32, but it was actually a really close game back and yeah, forth. UCF had their shots to 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 really to get in yeah. it, but you know what? You can't win them all. UCF so you, UCF will go undefeated next season. I'm confident of that. Uh, I don't know. I'm even joking. Either. They're going to go undefeated next year. Um, and Ohio State, Dwayne Haskins ended up the quarterback for Ohio State. Great, great uh, career. One awesome season, almost a Heisman winner. He's a, he'll be a top five, ten NFL draft pick. They beat Washington twenty eight to twenty three. They were up twenty eight to three, and then Washington almost came back. Texas they beat Georgia Bulldogs. One of the bigger upsets. They beat them twenty eight twenty one, but this wasn't even close. It was I think it was what twenty to three, twenty one to three at halftime, and Georgia scored a couple. We scored a couple of touchdowns later in the in the fourth quarter, even like with like five minutes left, they scored twice, and it wasn't Texas was all over them, and the shocker, kind of all shockers, the national championship game, the Clemson Tigers steamrolled Alabama forty four to sixteen. I did not see that coming. I thought they might be able to win. I didn't think they would blow them out. But now this is gonna piss Alabama off. So all you got, all you Alabama haters, they're just gonna, they're gonna do what the Patriots did this year in the NFL. Alabama's gonna win next year, and then y'all be bitching. See, so. I was going against Alabama the whole season just because, just because, no real reason. Uh, but so in the bowl games, I got twenty three out of forty. She actually beat me in the bowls. She got twenty five out of forty. So I got fifty eight percent right. She got sixteen percent right. Which I'm and shocked. There were there were sixteen games here at one point in the bowl games where we did them um, mm -hmm. with our cousins Christopher, Mikey, and Andrew. They're all brothers, mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of an interesting thing. Yeah. So between the five of us, you know, I, I would say I know probably the most college than Christopher, than Mikey, then it's between Andrew and Angela. Andrew. And Andrew knows I think more than Angela. He just yeah, doesn't yeah. care quite as much. <laughs> So, it's an interesting thing here. Between the three boys, Christopher knows the most, Mikey knows it, and then Andrew, I would say, they all had seven wins. Oh, they God. all went seven out of 16. <laughs> uh, they all had a, a nearly 44% clip. Um, it just kind of show, goes to show, uh, as I said earlier, just the fickle nature of football, and you just never know what can happen. So, when we did the bowl games, I was shocked. That I beat you only by two. Yeah, she she beat so. me by two. But she to be fair, there were there were um between the sixteen in the sixteen games where all five of us picked with me and our cousins, the boys, um, there were like four of them that she got over all of us. <laughs> like she she went with the outlier and she outlier and she ended up Is winning. That outlier upset? Outlier. Uh outlier. Kind of, yeah. Basically <laughs> the 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 one that wasn't picked. But all right, so I'm just going to just shout out. I have a few things here during the bowl games. There were some players that got 2,000 yards rushing or receiving, and I was keeping track, so congrats to these people. Uh, the one Houston wide receiver, Marcus Stevenson, ended up with 1,019 receiving yards. Uh, Two-lane running back, Darius Bradbury, ended up with 1,134 rushing yards. Uh, Wake Forest running back, Cade Carney. And um, uh, ended up... Kate Carney ended up with 1,005 rushing yards. Uh, Virginia running back Jordan Ellis ended up with 1,026 rushing yards. And for Virginia, wide receiver Olamide Zacchaeus ended up with 1,058 receiving yards. Uh, Oklahoma quarterback Kyler Murray, he ended up with actually 1,001 rushing yards, which is why he won the Heisman. He passed for like 4,000 whatever yards, had like 40-something touchdown passes. Uh, ran for a thousand yards. That's probably why he'll be. He may be a top five pick in the draft. He was deciding between baseball and because uh, he was actually a draft pick in baseball. 
So he was really, really good. He's going to go to the NFL. Try his hand there. Uh, all right. So Ohio State wide receiver Paris Campbell ended up with 1,063 receiving yards. Minnesota running back Muhammad Ibrahim ended up with 1,140 rushing yards. Marshall wide receiver Tyree Brady just got over 1,000 yards with 1,002. Uh, Buffalo running back Jarrett Patterson ended up with 1,013 rushing yards. Wide receiver Anthony Johnson, who I've been high up all season. He's going to be great in the NFL. Um, 1,011 receiving yards. Ohio, oh, no. Uh, Northern Illinois running back Trey Harbison ended up with 1,034 uh, rushing yards. Uh, Utah State running back Darwin Thompson ended up with 1,044 rushing yards. Uh, Stanford wide receiver J.J. Arcego Whiteside ended up with 1,059 receiving yards. Oregon running back C.J. Riddell ended up with 1,018 rushing yards, which he only needed 25 and he barely got it. He got to 43. So, and then let's see Georgia running back Elijah Holyfield, Evander Holyfield's son, the great boxer. He ran for 1,018 yards. He actually is skipping uh, into the NFL draft. He had he had some time left, but He's going to the NFL. LSU running back Nick Brosette ran for 1,039. Uh, Georgia Southern running back Wesley Fields ended up with 1,050. Arkansas State wide receiver Kirk Merritt ended up with 1,005 receiving yards. And last but not least, Army quarterback Kelvin Hopkins Jr. ended up with 1,017 rushing yards. So rushing for... yards, that means they ran. Yes. Isn't that something for a quarterback to do? Not often they don't run, but yeah, uh, the right. Army, they have a that triple option where uh, the, right. the quarterback right. ends up running for a whole lot of yards and stuff. So that is it for this is our last one for this season for our uh, for college. We're about to do one more for the NFL. So go check that out. Um, we'll be back. I'm going to do some stuff for the NFL draft and just less you know two months actually from from now about just over two months um that was that was it for the season it was a lot of fun thank yeah. you Linda, for doing this oh. um everybody watching thank you um we'll be back next year and i'll be we'll, back better than ever we're gonna try for a podcast so hopefully we'll get that uh, up and going by uh by next season if not we will definitely be back Congrats to all these bowl winners. Congrats to Clemson um, and everybody watching. Everybody, peace. Thank you.